So you ever hear this song? You better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. He's making a list and he's checking it twice. He's gonna find out who's naughty or nice. Santa Claus is coming to town. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. I have this print of a happy Santa Claus holding a sign that says, you better not pout. As Christmas nears, I tend to move it closer and closer to where my husband is seated. <laughs> so in an epic stretch of our imaginations, we can almost imagine John the Baptist singing this song, only about Jesus rather than Santa Claus. John the Baptist's one concern in life is sharing the message to get ready. Unfortunately, John the Baptist never seems to be in a very good mood, and I really can't imagine him singing or smiling for that matter. But nevertheless, his message mirrors the song we just sang. John wants people to get ready for Jesus, to clear the decks, and to decide whether they're going to be naughty or nice. John's message is about waking up, cleaning up, looking up, and choosing up. John knows the one who is coming will be the one who will lead the people back to God, back to sanity, back to basics, back to the knowing and experiencing of what matters most. God is coming to make things right. And in the poetic language of the prophet Isaiah, say to those who are of a feel, fearful heart, be strong. Do not fear. Here is your God. That's a beautiful way of expressing what a savior will do. What a return to God and to sanity and to the basics and to what matters most will look like and feel like. It will be like a huge weight lifted off of everyone's shoulders and a huge burden taken from everyone's hearts. What it doesn't mean is that with the coming of Jesus, there will never be sadness, never be grief or tragedy or bad things happening to good people. What it does mean is that never again will people feel God's absence in the good and bad times, but rather now and forever, God's loving presence in the midst. And there's more. The coming of Jesus as Messiah and as Savior will help us know what part we are to play in the writing of the world, in the redeeming of relationships, and in the reordering of the world's priorities. He will teach us, show us, tell us, model for us, and give us courage and hope to take his work as our own for the rest of our lives. But just like in the time before Jesus, when John the Baptist is preparing the way, we have to make a choice. Is the way of Jesus the priority around which we will order all other priorities? Is the holy way that Isaiah talks about the way we will commit to travel all the days of our lives? And this is where it gets really complicated for us, especially this time of year. There's this mystique about Advent, this period of four weeks when the church prepares for Christmas. The mystique is that it's meant to be a time of peace and reflection and quiet and stillness as we consider the coming of the baby Jesus at Christmas. It sounds lovely, but it has nothing to do with real life. Because frankly, the way life in Advent works, these four weeks are all about the children's events at school, the nutcracker, the shopping, the wrapping, the travel arrangements, 
the menu plans. Do your stomach hurt yet? Publix and Target and the Town Center and Amazon. The cards and calls and seemingly insurmountable schedule conflicts. These four weeks are also, for a lot of people, a time of sadness as they remember Christmases past with loved ones no longer here, and a time of anxiety and loneliness and depression for others. This is not, for a lot of us, the most wonderful time of the year. So let's see if we can reclaim a bit of sense and sanity this season in remembering the words of Isaiah. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who are of fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come and save you. In the midst of whatever is going on in your life right now, in whatever craziness you're mired, or whatever sadness you're feeling, remember that God is with you. That's the point of John the Baptist's message. He is coming. Help is on the way. You and I have decided to follow Jesus, and in the end, that's all that matters. We won't follow perfectly, and that's OK. Jesus is ingrating us. He's loving us. He isn't judging us. He's encouraging us. We all need Jesus most, not in the times of stillness and reflection, but in the hustle and bustle and ups and downs of life as we're really living it. So where right now in your lives do you need the courage to carry on, to keep going, to not lose heart? Where do you most need to remember Isaiah's words to be strong and to not fear? Because here is your God, and he will save you. Maybe that's the best use we can make of Advent, rather than worrying about quiet and stillness and reflection. Maybe asking the Savior to save you from fear and to give you courage is the best thing you could possibly be doing in the midst of these busy weeks leading up to Christmas. I came across this prayer poem the other day, which reminded me, as I hope it will you, that taking on Christ's courage and putting our fears in his lo loving hands is the gift he's offering to us right now, not at some point in the future. So listen to this and see if you can relate somewhere. You who sit by the bedside, you who stay late to finish the report, who wrestle your tireless demons, do not fear. You who gaze at the x-ray, who face another meeting at the school, who care for the aging parent, have courage. You who lament our cruelty and greed, who write letters about the climate, who stand in silence outside the prison, stay firm. God is not far, nor careless, nor scornful. God is here, here to accompany, here to love, here to save. Keep faith. When you are weary, God will strengthen you. When you are afraid, God will sustain you. When you cannot go on, rest your head. God will carry on. In your weak hands, in your feeble knees, the beloved is present, full of grace. Amen.